Howdy folks, welcome back to my channel. I got a fun video for you today as we're getting closer and closer to the end of the year here. And uh, I'd like to talk about Star Wars, or more specifically, my recent trip to Galaxy's Edge, the theme park at uh, Walt Disney World in Orlando. In fact, I'm wearing my Black Spire Outpost shirt today. Let me show you the back real quick. And um, I just uh, went there and had a really wonderful experience. And I wanted to post this video hoping that it helps somebody. Now there are a number of travel channels out there or Disney theme channels that have done videos about Galaxy's Edge. And in fact, I watched several of them to plan my trip. But one thing that I noticed is most of those kind of take on a vibe of their Disney people doing Star Wars or maybe their theme park people doing Star Wars or travel people. I'm a Star Wars person doing Disney. I've never been to a Disney park in my life. Um, didn't really have a desire to go, honestly. I'm not a Disney person, but I'm a huge Star Wars fan. So that's what today's video is about. I think there's more people out there like me that just want to hear about Disney from a Star Wars fan. Let's get into it. First things first, as I mentioned, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I actually have seen all nine movies in the theater. Um, in full transparency, the first one in 1977, I was just a little, little bitty guy, so I don't even remember it, but I was there. I certainly remember um, the episodes five and six and everything that came after that. Additionally, uh, I've read a lot of the novels, comics, video games, all that extended content. In fact, as we're sitting here, <laughs> there's a Star Wars comic on my desk. And over here, I always keep the old uh, VHS trilogy handy because it's just a cool thing to, uh, to have around. But anyway, so the point is I'm a, I'm a big fan. have been for a long time. I heard about Galaxy's Edge and I was like, I want to go. Now, I had no clue where to start. And that's what this video might help you with. Um, so by the way, I have some notes here if you see me reference this throughout. But first things first, you have to get a ticket to the park, okay? So you go to mydisneyexperience.com. That's going to take you to the Walt Disney World um, website and you're gonna need to buy a ticket. So if you have a date in mind, you can look up that date and you can see the price for that day. Now, if you're just doing Galaxy's Edge and that's it, you're probably only gonna want a one-day pass. Maybe you want a two, but they do have multi-day passes if that's something, you know, if you wanna check out more stuff. But you can definitely do it in a day if that's, if you just want the Star Wars experience. Now, you have to buy a ticket, but that doesn't get you in. You also have to make a park reservation. I know that seems unintuitive, but the reason is a ticket will work for any of the four parks, and there are four of them. There's Magic Kingdom, there's Animal Kingdom, there's Epcot Center, and of course, there's Hollywood Studios. Hollywood Studios is what you want. So you get a ticket, and then you allocate your pass to Hollywood Studios. Now you've got your ticket, you're ready to go. You obviously have to get to Orlando. Um, I'll let you figure that out. Then if you have to stay overnight, you're gonna need lodging, of course, and there are Disney hotels, they are extremely expensive. I know there are advantages to staying in those hotels, but I'm not gonna go into that. Um, I would recommend you stay in either the Disney Springs or Lake Buena Vista areas. They're very close to the theme parks. Most of them have free shuttles that will drive you right to the front door um, of the Disney Hollywood Studios. Now, after you have gone in and set up your account on My Disney Experience and bought your ticket and all of that, um, they'll talk about this thing called the Magic Band, um, which is basically a wristband that you can have to get you into the park. Now you don't need to buy that. You can buy one of those if you want, but you can download the app on your phone, the uh, Walt Disney World app, and then it puts like a card, at least on iOS, it puts a card in your wallet, a Disney card, and then you'll use that to get in. So what will happen is you'll show up to Disney Hollywood Studios, you'll go to the entrance, and there will be a ton of people, especially if you get there early, there'll be a whole lot of people, and they have these little readers. And when you get to the reader, you just hold your phone up to the reader, it will read uh, that little card, you know, the proximity reader, and then you put your finger on this little fingerprint reader thing, and then you're in. Now, you're in, oh my gosh, you're in, so now what? So, the best thing that I, you know, I looked at the maps and stuff, and the easiest way is just stay left. Every, every place that you can turn left, turn left, and I'm talking about on the main road, like don't go down all the little side things that go to the stores and stuff, but just kind of go left and stay on left on that main road. Every time it forks, just stay on the left fork, and you'll go right into Galaxy's Edge. That's probably the quickest way to get there. Now, you'll know you're on the right path because maybe about halfway, maybe a little over halfway there, you'll pass this thing called Star Tours, and it's gonna look Star Wars themed. It is Star Wars themed. In fact, there's an AT-AT out front. So, uh, but keep walking past that. That means you're on the right path, but you don't wanna stop there. That's not Galaxy's Edge. Now, when you pass into Galaxy's Edge, you're going to know 
because the Disney park is, it has, has this vibe, this childlike vibe. There's music playing, there's gonna be decorations, life-size Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck walking around, like all that kind of stuff. And as soon as you pass in the Galaxy's Edge, there is a soundtrack, but there's no music. It's gonna be the sounds of droids and like creatures and ships taking off. You're gonna know immediately when you get to Galaxy's Edge. There will be no doubt. And the first thing that you're gonna to come to basically right when you pass into Galaxy's Edge, the first part is gonna be like the resistance area. Okay, so now might be a good time to talk about like where you're at and give you like kind of the backstory of the Galaxy's Edge Park. So it's gonna take place here on the planet of Batu. And Batu is an outer rim planet. And if you go back before the Galactic Empire and all that, uh, you know, Batu was a common stopping point for people traveling past the Outer Rim uh, because it was like basically on the galaxy's edge, that's the name. Uh, then hyperspace travel was invented and uh, it kind of fell into like a, being a little backwater world, but it was a den for smugglers because they had a nice big spaceport and everything, so smugglers would stop there and, and traders and whatnot. Um, and so then years later, when we get to the time of the Resistance and the First Order, the Resistance set up a base on Batu. Okay, so you probably want to know that and the Black Spire outpost is kind of like the marketplace there where all the trading and stuff takes place. So that's the place that you're on. That's the time period that you're on. Okay, now if you're like, oh, I'm only a fan of the early movies and not the later ones, it doesn't matter. You're going to get plenty of, uh, of great Easter eggs while you're there. Now, when you're in the resistance area, you'll know you're there because there's a full-size U-wing off to your right and a full-size X-wing off to your left. And you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, because it's impressive to see those things, you know, that big. And then you will also see there's a little like shop area that's um, called Resistance Supply, and they sell all kinds of memorabilia, t-shirts and, and toys and things like that, but all like resistance themed. And um, I will say this several times during this video, look up. If you look up, you're gonna see a lot of Easter eggs. Up above some of the merchandise, you'll see things like blaster rifles from the early movies and communicators and charges and things that you saw used in a lot of the early movies, kind of little homages to the hardcores that they threw in there, which is really kind of nice. This is also where you get in line for the Rise of the Resistance ride, and that's basically the focus of this park. That's like the main thing that everybody goes for. So the reason I'm saying this is you probably want to get in line early. So I'm going to tell you the route that I would do if I was doing this again. It's not necessarily the route that I did, but I would come in and get right in line for the rise of the resistance. Okay. Um, now my particular experience when I got in line and I got in line fairly early, but when I got in line, the line was 150 minutes long. So that's two and a half hours people. And shortly after I got in line, I checked on the app. So again, remember I talked about the app. If you download the app, you can check the queue times throughout the day. And so I checked on the app and just in me being in line like 15, 20 minutes, the time had increased to 170 minutes. So now we're talking three hours. You know, plan your bathroom breaks accordingly and such. Uh, but anyway, you're gonna be in line a long time. Now, one of the nice things is there are a lot of cool little Easter eggs as you're in that line. Like you'll see like some weapons uh, cabinets with some blasters in them and you'll see some flight suits kind of hanging up and stuff. Some stuff that looks like armament for the X-Wings and such. Um, so, so there are some little kind of Easter eggs as you walk through there, some cool stuff to look at. Um, so it does make the time go a little faster, but you are gonna be in that line for a very long time. Now, when you finally get up to the front of the line, you'll go into this room and you'll get a briefing. Incoming transmission from Ray. So after that briefing, you're going to go through these doors and your shuttle is going to be waiting because you're needing to get off of Batu, right? And this part is super cool because it is like super real. You're standing there and there's this full-size shuttle and you're going to get on. And you get on that shuttle and then your captain's going to talk to you. And the captain I had was of the Mon Calamari species, which by the way, there's an Easter egg there if you don't know. Um, back after the destruction of the first Death Star, um, the Mon Calamari joined with the rebellion and they were actually imperial sympathizers so it was a big thing and they actually provided a lot of the ships for the imperial navy they had a huge navy um so that's why you see a lot of mon calamari captains like 
Admiral Radis, um, Admiral Akbar, etc., etc., throughout the movie. So, anyway, um, I had a Mon Calamari captain, and we take off, and uh, it's just crazy, like the detail and the realism. I don't know if those windows are all screens or what they're doing, but the whole shuttle moves and does all this crazy stuff. And you take off and then you get caught in the tractor beam of a Star Destroyer and you get pulled aboard the Star Destroyer and you get out of the shuttle. So remember, you just got in and you're outside on Batu, and you get out and you're inside of a Star Destroyer. <laughs> It is crazy immersive. There's like all these troops and um, you get the officers will interact with you and they tell you that you're being taken to interrogation and they take you to this cell and along the way you pass like computers and there's actually scomp ports where like R2-D2 would put his little, you know, thing in. Um, it's really, really cool. And so anyway, then of course, if you remember from the briefing, Ray said that a resistance crew had, had infiltrated the Star Destroyer and of course they show up and break you out of the cell. So one thing I should mention here, there are these, um, first order uh, short range vehicles that they're like a little skiff um like a personnel transport and then they can go into like a little um kind of ship and actually fly around and and land and then you know come back out and be used as ground, ground transport and, and, but these little these little skiffs are like all over the star destroyer so after you get out you get in these skiffs and so you know you've got multiple people that you got onto the transport with and they're all divided up into different skiffs now and you're all like going different directions and these things can move backwards forwards whatever and it is crazy it is a crazy ride and i won't like spoil everything but it is crazy you get shot at it's crazy and eventually um you end up at the at the kind of uh ship part of the of the vehicle and you're able to get off the ship and and come back down to batu and then when you end up back on batu it's like okay now we're back outside it is crazy it is a crazy ride i i highly recommend it um and uh, you, you'll get out of there and your heart will be pumping And then from there, I would recommend you just go right up kind of the center aisle there towards the marketplace or the actual Black Spire outpost. And that is a really, really neat area. That is like kind of the focus of the whole thing. And again, I'm gonna say this again, and I'll say this probably multiple times today through this video, look up. You will miss so many things if you don't look up. It is so cool, um, just all the detail and the time that, that they put into all this. And, um, you know, even if you look around, even things like the trash cans are themed and um, you'll see all kinds of cool details. Even the POS terminals, if you buy something, the POS terminals are themed to look like they're in universe. It's just very, very neat. But as you go through the marketplace there, you'll you'll see the creature stall, which is really cool. They have a sleeping loath cat there. It's not for sale, but it's just a really cool thing to see. Um, and then they have all kinds of like creatures that you can take home with you. And I mean, we have dewbacks and banthas and what have you. They actually had some baby Dianogas in there. And I know Dianoga is not exactly a cuddly animal, but it's pretty cute as a baby. I'll, I'll say that. But all kinds of little um, things like that that you can buy. And then you'll also want to check out Jewels of Bith. Um, it's another store that's right there. It's got a really cool sign outside. And when you go in there, um, this is going to have a lot of like metal trinkets. And I mean like keychains, like um, luggage tags, refrigerator magnets, uh, lanyards, and things like that. So a lot of that kind of stuff that you can get there. And it's a really neat shop. Um, and then if you keep continuing throughout there, you'll come to the Toydarian Toy Maker. Again, a very cool sign out front, and he's got all kinds of toys there. Um, so you definitely want to check those out, dolls and, and you know, ships and all that kind of stuff. But they also have, um, remember from the cantina scene in Mos Eisley, they have those instruments that the band was playing, and they actually make noise. They aren't, they don't have like reeds or anything, but they have a little speaker and you can push the buttons and they'll, make noise and I actually played a melody on one like you can actually play a melody not just like push a button and it plays it for you so it's actually kind of cool I kind of wish I would have bought one at the time I was thinking I didn't want to carry it with me the entire time but I kind of regret that I kind of wish I would have bought one there's some other really cool stuff there Kat Saka's kettle which is where you can get popcorn and uh, you know kind of munch on that as you walk around that's kind of a neat little little place but then when you get to the end of the little marketplace row there is when you come to Ronto Roasters. And that's kind of the focus of the Black Spire Outpost. It is really cool. And so what you're going to see there is um, there's a droid roasting some creatures with a pod racer engine. And uh, the droid will actually talk, not a lot, but if you sit there for a while, you'll hear him like talk every once in a while. 
and uh, it, it looks very real. Like you're like, holy cow, this is crazy. And of course they serve, um, they serve food there and they don't have a very, they just have a few items on the menu, but you can just walk right up and get an order. You don't have to pre-order anything. You can just walk up, stand in line, get your Ronto wrap or whatever. And the Ronto wrap is really good. And if you know what a Ronto is from, you know, from some of the previous content, um, they aren't roasting Ronto, like the stuff that's on the spits, not Rontos. Rontos would be much, much bigger, but supposedly there's Ronto meat, you know, in this little wrap. Of course it's pork, but you know, it, it, it's really good. I actually really enjoyed the Ronto wrap. So something to check out. And they have some flavored teas there as well. I got one called the Tatooine Sunset, but um, kind of a neat little spot, just very immersive again. Now, after you walk out of Ronto Roasters, um, and I'm just gonna walk right past Docking Bay 7 because we're gonna come back to that. But you cannot miss, you will see a life-size Millennium Falcon and it is a full-on geekgasm, guys. Like you are just gonna, uh, your mouth's gonna drop open. It is so cool. And you can go right up to that and see all the details. And again, you will be amazed at the detail that this team put into building all this stuff. And hang out there for a minute because you might see Chewbacca. I did. Chewbacca came down the ramp of the Falcon and was interacting with the crowd and stuff. So a lot of cool stuff um, that you can see there. And this is also where you get in line for the Smuggler's One Run ride, which is the other ride that's inside of, um, of uh, Galaxy's Edge. So now this ride... It's a lot shorter ride, so the lines are not going to be as long. And when I got there, that line was about 70 minutes. The, the queue for, for that ride is about 70 minutes. So much shorter than the Rise of the Resistance ride. However, there's a secret. They have a single rider lane that you can go get in. And so I went into the single rider lane, and I was only in line about 15 minutes. And I actually shot a video as I was walking in there. And... Uh, the majority of the time that I walked in there, there was nobody else in line. I mean, I had to walk quite a ways before I saw another person. So the single rider lane is a great way to get up towards the front. And what happens is, the reason they have that is you have to be put into, into groups of six to go into the ride. And so the families will, you know, the single rider lane comes this way and the family lane comes this way and they sort of meet and there's an employee there and they're trying to keep everybody in groups of six. So like if there is a group of five that comes in, they'll just grab somebody out of the single rider. If there's a group of four, they'll grab two people out of the single rider or whatever. So it just moves way, way faster because you're basically filling in the spots. That, that's a neat little thing to know, but uh, the, that, that ride is a ton of fun. Um, after you get into your group of six, you board the Millennium Falcon and again, super geekgasm. Um, you are on the Millennium Falcon. It looks exactly like everything you've seen in the movies. Um, you'll walk on and you'll see that iconic game table with the little bench um, and you'll get all the way up to the flight deck, all the monitors, computers, everything along the way, Greeblies galore. And you'll get all the way up to the flight deck and it's intense guys. But anyway, then you go on your flight deck and you go on your little mission. I won't go into all the details there, but it is a heck of a lot of fun. We ended up taking the Falcon on a coaxium run and it was fun. It was really fun, guys. And, and whoever is sitting in the front seat actually gets to pull the lever for that light speed. So there's a little extra uh, thing for you. And that is a super cool moment when you pull that lever and see all those stars streak back. It's childhood dreams coming true. Anyway, after you walk out of the Smuggler's Run, keep walking a little bit and you'll find Oga's Cantina. And you'll know it because there'll be kind of this stylized margarita looking thing painted on the wall. And um, it's, it's the place where you can get drinks. Now, first of all, Oga's Cantina is uh, named after Oga Gara, um, who is a character in some of the uh, comic books and such, if you're familiar with that name. Now, one thing about Oga's Cantina, you have to have a reservation to get in and you can make a reservation with the app or you can just walk up to the door and ask the people how long. Now, once you get in, I had to wait about a half an hour, so that's my personal experience. But once you get in, you are limited to 45 minutes. You can't stay longer than 45 minutes. So um, just know that. Um, and there's no food served there, it's just drinks. But there are a lot of non-alcoholic drinks and I'm talking like mixed drinks that are non-alcoholic. So. If, if you don't drink alcohol, you can still go in there and have a really good time. But when you go in there, man, it, it feels like the cantinas you've seen in the Star Wars movies and, and things like that. It just, they did a great job of creating that feel. And uh, there is this droid DJ named Rex who's playing this this crazy soundtrack. And it's, it's really cool to just kind of watch him and interact with him. Uh, but additionally, the drinks that I had were very good. It was a neat little experience. I probably was only in there for maybe 20, 30 minutes, but like I said, you have a 45 minute max. I just got a couple drinks, went back out on my way. 
So after you leave Ogus Cantina, just walk all the way to the end and you'll see first order cargo. And this is kind of the flip side of the coin of like the resistance supply we saw at the beginning, um, where they had the U-Wing and the X-Wing, there'll be a first order shuttle there. And you may see some characters hanging out like Kylo Ren and some stormtroopers may come around and, and interact with the crowd and such. And keep your eyes open for Vi Marathi. Now, if you're not sure who Vi Marathi is, she's another character that came from uh, uh, some of the comics and the extra material. And she was actually a resistance spy who was stationed on Batu um, after like episode seven in that time period. And so she actually, I saw her several times like in the background and she'd be kind of checking out what the stormtroopers were doing, kind of spying. It was kind of a neat little Easter egg that they threw in there for you. Um, but then of course, there's also a store there where you can buy first order themed merchandise. And again, look up because there's just cool stuff to see if you look up throughout this park, look up. There's so many cool things um, that they kind of put up above you. But anyways, directly across from First Order Cargo is the milk stand. And this was actually one of my favorite little little things in the, in the whole park. I really like this. Um, it's made to look like something you would have seen in the Tatooine Marketplace. And they're serving the blue milk like Luke drank in Episode 4. And they also have green milk. And I ended up actually getting one of each just to try them. Um, they actually taste really good. Really good, uh, nice refreshing drinks. Great for a hot day. But anyway, so make sure you check that out just because it's a really neat little experience. After you leave the milk stand, walk around that corner and you'll come to the Droid Depot. Now, before you go into the Droid Depot, I would just say walk around the building a couple times because there's lots of cool stuff outside like droids and droid parts and things like that. And um, it's just, it's a neat little vibe they've got there. But once you walk in, you'll see this conveyor of uh, like droid parts going around the ceiling arms, legs, uh, things like that. And um, this is where the point of Droid Depot is you can buy a lot of droid themed merchandise there, but you can also build your own droid. So there's like, you can pay, I think it's about a hundred bucks and you pay and you can put a droid together, you know, pick your own custom things. And you can actually get personality chips for them and everything to make them, you know, a little different as all droids are kind of different in that universe. And it's a really neat little thing and they're remote controllable droids and stuff. And so, um, you can make one of those really popular with kids and such. And I, I opted to not do that. And it wasn't the money. It was the fact that I didn't want to carry this droid around with me for the rest of the day. Um, but in retrospect, I kind of wish I would have just to have the experience of building the droid. And I could have probably just given it away to some kid in the, in the park or something. Here, have a droid. Um, so I kind of wish I would have done that because I think the experience would have been really neat. But you can actually see everybody doing it. And you can watch them. And it's, it's, really, it's a really neat experience to go to the Droid Depot. And then right next door to the Droid Depot is Savi's workshop. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any pictures from there um, because you have to pay to get in. Uh, it's kind of like the Droid Depot, but for lightsabers. So you can go into Savi's workshop and you can build your own lightsaber, uh, similar kind of, uh, you pick out your kyber crystal and the, you know, the way you want your hilt to look and then you put it all together and activate it. So it's, it's kind of similar to the Droid Depot, but for lightsabers. But like I said, you can't get in unless you buy one and I just really didn't want to lug the lightsaber around. So I opted not to do that. Um, however, outside Savi's workshop, there is a speeder there that's a great photo op. Um, really cool little thing. You can get right up on it and everything. And then you go right up the stairs from Savi's workshop and you'll come to Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities. And this is probably the coolest store in the entire Galaxy's Edge, honestly. Um, this store, you could spend a lot of time in there. Geeks will lose their mind in there. So first of all, Doc Ondar is a character, again, from some of the extended content. He's an Athorian character um, who collects things, all kinds of odd things. And there's actually in one of the comics where uh, Han Solo and Chewbacca steal a baby Sarlacc for him. And, uh, and the, the baby Sarlacc is there and it moves. It's, it's pretty intense to see. Um, but then there's all kinds of things on the wall. So again, look up, there is so much stuff to see inside of Doc Ondar's. And Doc Ondar himself is there and it is crazy how real that like animatronic Athorian looks. It's pretty crazy. And he's speaking Athorian too. So it's pretty, um, it is pretty intense. Now, Doc Ondar sells lightsabers that are already built, not the ones you build yourself, but, and also kyber crystals and holocrons and some other stuff like that. So there's a lot of cool stuff in there, a lot of stuff that's really gonna appeal to the hardcore geeks in there. Great store, spend some time in there. 
And then after you leave Doc Ondar's, go back across by where the Fal Falcon uh, is is parked and and go back to Docking Bay 7, because hopefully about now you might be hungry again after that Ronto Roasters that you had earlier. And so Docking Bay 7 is a restaurant. And one thing to note about that, you can't just walk in and order. You have to order and pay before you go in. I know that seems weird, but you'll use the app. You'll pick out your food, everything that you want. You'll place the order, you'll pay, and then you'll get a time window. And then you come back during your time window, you'll get a, a number and you show that to one of the employees and then they'll let you in and you go get your food. But what's cool about the setup there, if you look on top of it, you'll see a cargo freighter that's docked on top of, of Docking Bay 7. And it'll look like, looks like they're unloading cargo out of it. And then when you go into the restaurant, you can actually see the cargo coming down through the ceiling. So it's again, really well the way they did all this. Um, very cool, but it actually feels like you're eating inside of a hangar. It's, it's pretty neat. And the food was really good. Uh, they have a, a pretty nice menu. And uh, what I had was very, very good. So um, that's definitely a great experience. I would definitely recommend that one. Okay, now at this point, you've basically done everything in Galaxy's Edge. But as you walk back out, make sure you walk by the speeders and such that are kind of along that one wall. That's kind of a neat little thing to see. There's some speeders and some droids and such. And uh, you know, you can always look around for cast members. You might see stormtroopers or Ray might make an appearance, Chewbacca, Vimerati. So just kind of be aware of all that. And again, keep looking up because so many details. But now at this point, if you go back, all the way back the way you came, and go back into the main park and stop at that Star Tours that you passed on the way in. And you'll know you get there because you'll see the big ATAT. -AT. And the Star Tours is kind of set up to be like an airport would have been long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away. So you walk in and it really kind of looks like an airport. And there's a big departures arrivals board and it's got all the text in Arabesh, which was really quite neat. Um, and you can see like this is going to Naboo or this is uh, going to uh, you know Coruscant or whatever, and on time or delayed or like all these things. By the way, if you can read Arabesh, you're gonna have a lot of things to look at because I could not believe how much Arabesh text was throughout that park. But anyway, um, and you go through and you'll see some familiar some familiar characters. You'll see C-3PO and R2-D2 as you're going in there. They're working on uh, one of the um, uh, uh, spaceships and um, you basically go through it just like an airport you know, one of the cool thing one of the cool touches they did is they had signs that were like visit Coruscant or you know vacation in Naboo or whatever it was kind of neat how they did all that but uh, unfortunately once you get to that point they no longer allow photos so I don't have any more pictures or videos past that point uh, but what happens is you get in the little craft it's actually 3d so they give you 3d glasses and you actually go on a little adventure in that craft and it's honestly not as cool as, as the Smuggler's one Run ride or the Rise of the Resistance ride. However, I will say that when that uh, spacecraft does the light speed jump, that was the most impressive light speed jump by far. Um, and I don't know if it's because of the 3D glasses or just maybe the way that that thing is set up, but it, that's definitely the most impressive light speed jump. So I would go to that if for no other reason than that. But there you go. There's your day at Galaxy's Edge. That's kind of how you can do. You could have lunch and dinner there and kind of take your time and go around, build a lightsaber, build a droid, have some fun, geek out, because it is really, really neat. So thanks folks for watching this video. Again, this is not supposed to be a Disney fan does Star Wars. This is a Star Wars fan does Disney, okay? For the first time. And I think there's a lot of us out there that are in the same boat. I hope this video is helpful to somebody. Thanks for watching. See you next time.